Welcome to season four of Maurice Renata's show. Today I'm sitting here with the director and writer, Roger Omias of Finding Me Truth and actor Eugene Turner. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, and y'all know Romeo Redwine. <laughs> well, of course we had to have you. You know, we seen part one, Finding Me, and it was an excellent movie for those of y'all that didn't see okay, it. So, so, who is Fabian Allen? Take my advice and give my warning. What? Don't sleep with that man. Fabian, what you think I'm looking for now and forever? What are you afraid of? You better learn how to accept the good things in life while they're knocking on your door. You have to find meaning for yourself, by yourself. Where could they get it? Um, you can get it at iTunes. You can uh, get it at Amazon.com. You can also go to TLAreleasing.com to get it there. Guess what y'all all getting for Christmas? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what prompted you to do Finding Me. Um, I was really inspired by a writer, especially um, Elon Harris, when he came out with Invisible Life. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, working at a dead-end job. so. Um, I always wanted to write, and I've always been into film, so I wrote it back in 1997, shelved it, and then in 2006 decided to make it into a screenplay, get some actors, and really just make this film uh, very organically in a way, which was meaning no support, just kind of old school style with a video camera and just going with it, and it turned bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So, Well, I had the pleasure of going to the premiere. And it was an excellent movie. Like, normally, I sit in the front, you know, the lights go out, and so do my eyes. <laughs> and, you know, I stayed alert. I was, I was interested. I was engaged. From part one to now, Finding Me Truth, which is coming out soon. With the characters, you definitely see a growth. Um, it's a, it, it takes place maybe a, just about a year later from the original. And you, you, through watching the story, you hear the developments of each of these characters. Uh, Fabian has grown, Amir has grown, Greg has grown, and Jay has. Whether it had been through what happens between the two films or something that's going on right as the film starts, but yet there definitely is a growth with the characters. Finding Me Experience continues. Now, Eugene, <laughs> your character is bisexual, yeah. causing all kind of ruckus. How was that? How was that playing a bisexual character? Um, it's like playing any character, you know, anything, as an actor, anything you give me, I'm going to play. Greg, how <laughs> has the character evolved from part one and part two? Um, well, my storyline has gotten extremely complicated. Um, there's new characters that have come onto the set, and I'm involved with um, some of those characters. Um, Can you tease a little? Give us a little snippet? Hmm. The public wants to know. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I might forget a couple birthdays. Valentine's Day may be a little hard for Greg. Mm. Um, I think that's about all I can. Yeah, that's about all I can give you. Okay. Expect Greg to be spotlighted, especially in one particular scene, where you'll be like. <clears throat> but just remember, at the end of the day, Greg is human. <laughs> Have you found yourself while doing this movie? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the funny thing is. Um, when we started filming the first one, I've always wanted to be an actor. I went to high school for it, I went to training programs for it, um, but it took me actually working on set with Roger to awaken that part of me up and realize that that's all I want to do. So that's all I'm focusing on right now is acting. So that part of me I did find while filming this. Thank you, Roger. Yeah. But look at that man's jeans. It's been a long, hard, dark, stiff, Maurice Morrell's character is going to be causing 
even more problems this time around. He plays a bigger part in this in this film, yeah. You get to see a lot more of why Jay is the way he is in this film. Oh, in real life, if that was my spirit, she would have made it to part two. <laughs> I would have killed 10 half day problems. <laughs> <laughs> but you always have that person, you know, that, yeah, that, we that we person. That that Everybody has that friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was on the set of Finally True. And I had a ball. I mean, I was starving. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize. You know, when you watch movies, you always it looks like oh, they just went to the set and did what they need to do and left. Yeah, no. I was there at eleven o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and I left that studio at what a quarter to midnight. Yeah. And yeah, and I had to be in Philly the next day. So yes, I was very tired. But now I have the acting bug, and um, <laughs> I'm gonna take this opportunity to. <laughs> Put myself out here and be like, I know this will be a part three. And it's going to be a series. It's going to be a series. Ooh, for real? Uh. <laughs> let, me get, let me get my acting face on. I, you know, I always want to play the bitch on like shows. So if you write like a bitchy character, I well, we, have we that got that. J- and Jay oh, and Greg, everybody's a bitch. Yeah, everybody's kind of a bitch in this. Yeah. Well, wait till you see the second one. Well, wait till you see the second one. Well, yeah, Fabian. Fabian grows the most. Yeah. Oh, wow. He grows some kahunas. Well, Mm -hmm. I expect my free ticket in the mess. (laughs) I must admit, I identify with Fabian's innocent because I'm a very innocent person and I'm trying to find myself. As you write your characters, do you put snippets of yourself in? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's a part of me in each, each character. Wow. Each character, even the father in the, in the original, is a part of me. Okay. That, um, that's the best way for me to identify with, or or to make the character real, because there has to be some kind of real life in there. And Fabian's journey, um, I didn't go through that. That's not me, but there's a bit of you know me in there, and even Greg's wandering eye. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now I asked Eugene earlier that he find himself acting the role. How is it for you? Directing and writing it must be very therapeutic for you to do all of this. Yeah, I mean this this is this is my calling in life to be a writer, to be um, a director, to be in, in something creative. You know, I'm creating something, and it's not just me by myself. It's everyone that's involved. You can't to be a, to have that kind of ability. You know, it's a gift, and you should not deny it. You should not deny it. You did an amazing job directing. I watched it for the first time last night. Um, I got a blockbuster, but how else can the viewers tune in and get this Finding Me, the first part? You can get it on iTunes, you can rent it, or you can uh, purchase it. You can also get it from um, TLA Releasing, Blockbuster, Amazon. Um, it's all over. Netflix, you can get it on Netflix as well. Oh, awesome. awesome. So when could we expect Finding Me Truth to be released? Early, no, late spring, early summer. Perfect, child. <laughs> I gotta be sitting up in the theater with my photo on. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see you, you made the cut. Hold up, what happened? <laughs> he's an extra in, in the film. Yeah, he's, he's an a, a, I extra. I touch right there. He's in one of the scenes. Uh, Marie said, you didn't call me the, the like, is there a... Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>